Here we go. It's the tutorial everyone's been waiting for. It's time to build your own blockhead. In this tutorial, we'll sharpen our foundational blender skills and create our very own spinning blockhead GIFs with Blender. So let's open up a general Blender file and plan out our project. Every Blender project starts with the default cube. And while you'll get used to deleting this little sucker for most of your scenes, we're keeping it here for this tutorial, because blocks are also known as cubes. But cube head isn't a fun term. So, with that important information out of the way, let's explore our default workspace using some basic movement shortcuts learned in the Blender configuration and shortcuts tutorial earlier. We can rotate our view around our cube with middle mouse button and change viewport settings to view rendered, shaded, and wireframe modes. Keep in mind we're still in object mode, but not for long. If we press tab, Blender will go into edit mode. We can also access edit mode from the drop down menu in the top left of the layout workspace. Edit mode allows us to use all of the selection, movement, scaling, and rotational tools from object mode, but it's different from object mode in many ways. In most of my Blender projects, I'm moving primarily between object mode and edit mode. Object mode, as we learned in past tutorials, allows us to move around our scene quickly, selecting and altering assets. One of the primary differences between edit mode and object mode is that in edit mode, you are locked in to the object you have selected in the outliner. For example, and you don't have to follow along for this, if I were to tab back into object mode, shift A and create a new shape, let's say a sphere, with that sphere selected, if I tab back into edit mode, the changes I make in edit mode will only affect our sphere that we are locked into. Uh, furthermore, I can choose to select different parts of my object in edit mode, where we can select by vertices, edges, or faces. If I choose to select by faces and select a single face of my sphere in edit mode, with the selection, movement, scaling, and rotational tools, we can make alterations to the parts of our shape we have selected. This comes in handy when modeling and building new objects in Blender, but in this tutorial we won't be making any alterations to the default shape of our cube, so we can delete this sphere and move on. Now, building our blockhead has a lot to do with setting up the materials for our shape. In edit mode, with our cube selected, we can enlarge our properties panel a bit to get a better view of the materials section. Moving around the scene to get a better view of our basic cube shape, we can deduce that our cube is in fact a cube and has six sides. By default, all sides have this boring gray material. Our final version should look like our head, but instead of using six different images for each material, we'll only use five since the sides of our head and our ears can just be the same image flipped. Now would actually be a good time to pause the video and acquire the five images that you'll be using for your blockhead. I took pictures of my face, the sides, the top of my head, the back of my head, and my neck for the bottom. The images are saved separately on my computer as five different PNG files. It may help to make your own folder for your blockhead images to stay organized. Back in Blender, we'll start designating materials to our block by pressing the plus button and new in the materials section of our cube. With our front face selected in edit mode, we can assign the new material to our single front face and give it some arbitrary color so that we know that this face is the front face. Do the same for the sides of the head. Remember, we're using the same picture for the side of the head, so these can both be the same material for now. Now repeat these steps of selecting a face, making a new material, and assigning it for the top, back, and bottom faces. And there we go. Our block now is materially organized and ready to get block headed. 
One last step before importing our photos is to go to Edit and Preferences, and in the Add-on section, make sure that we have Node Wrangler ticked. We'll be using this add-on in the shading workspace, so we want to make sure that it is activated and ready for when we need it. Now to start adding in our pictures to the blockhead. Blender is notorious for its versatility. That being said, there's always a handful of solutions for the same problem. The first way to add your pictures to your cube object is through the shading workspace. With our front material selected, we can navigate to the shading tab at the top. This is your basic shading node editor. We won't get too deep into any of these node functions. Just know that one way to add an image to a material is by pressing this node here, your base material, and using the shortcut Control T. This shortcut is part of the node wrangler. So if you messed up in turning that on in the add-on section, it might not work for you. Either way, in the shading editor, you can add your image through an image texture node. Click open file in the image texture and locate your front face image file, which should be the face of your blockhead. Make sure you're in shading mode in the viewport so that you can confirm the material, the image, and your object are all connected. Here I can see that the front face has changed to my image, but it's unaligned and way too big. To change the size of our image texture on the face, we can adjust our UV wrap in the UV editing tab. In our UV editing tab, we can change the alignment and wrapping of our textures. If you aren't seeing any color or images on your blockhead, then you may need to go make sure that you're in the shading viewport of the layout half of your UV editing workspace. With our front face selected in edit mode, I can press U to unwrap the front texture. This resizes our texture, but it is still flipped incorrectly. In our UV editor on the left of the UV workspace, we can press A to select our box and R to rotate it until it matches with our scene. We can also make changes to the alignment of our texture from the map coordinates node in the shading node editor. Again, there's multiple ways to do the same thing here. Isn't Blender awesome? Next, we'll pull in the image file for the sides of our blockhead. In the Properties tab on the right, we'll go to our Materials tab and select the side material. In my case, I designated it to the color yellow. We'll repeat the process of going into the Node Editor in the Shading Workspace, pressing our Base Material node and using the Node Wrangler shortcut Control t to add in our image texture and accompanying nodes. In the Image Texture node, we'll click Open and navigate to our side image file. Now we can go back into the UV editor. We'll UV unwrap the side material one side at a time. For our first side, we'll press U and we'll need to flip the image. We can do this by scaling the UV wrap in the UV editor and reversing it. This has the effect of giving us the negative scalar of the image, or a horizontal flip. The other side will only need to be unwrapped and rotated, no flipping necessary. We'll repeat these steps of loading the texture into the node editor, UV unwrapping, and editing the alignment for top, bottom, and back image textures. Don't be afraid to practice using your shortcuts during this time. U to unwrap, G to move, S to scale, and R to rotate. Develop your own pace, your own workflow with this. Enjoy the process. Now, with our blockhead fully textured, we can start to set up our final render. In the Output Properties tab, we'll want to set a render file for our images. By default, Blender will export our animation as a PNG sequence. In this tutorial, our animation will be 50 frames, so you'll probably want to make a render folder for your render files, otherwise things can get disorganized really quick. With our output file set, we can set the length of our animation by changing the parameters in our timeline window at the bottom of the layout panel. We can type in 50 for 50 frames. 
We'll also want our animation to render to transparent PNGs so that our animated GIF can be placed over any background. To do this, we'll go to the Render Properties tab and under the Film drop-down menu, make sure Transparent is ticked. Now, when we look in the rendered view, we can see that our background has been omitted and our transparent setting is confirmed by the checkered grid guides. When we press zero to view our scene through our camera view, we may notice a few things. First of all, the lighting is subpar. And while our GIF is centered in the frame, there's a lot of extra space around it. We can change the dimensions of our camera by going to the Output Properties tab and typing in a new resolution. I want a square GIF, so 500 by 500 pixels should work for this. I'll also want to zoom my camera in. In Camera View in Object Mode, with the camera selected, I can press G and drag while holding the middle mouse button to zoom the camera closer to my object. I also want to select the light while in object mode and bring it closer to my face. I use the numbers to switch camera views and G to move the light while it's selected to light up my blockhead for the camera. Now, to animate the blockhead, we can pull up our playback window, which is the timeline at the bottom of the layout workspace. Here is where we do all of our animating. To navigate the animation, we can scrub back and forth in this timeline or change the current frame's parameter from this box. We want the animation to be of our blockhead spinning, so we'll set our timeline to the zeroth frame and in the Object Properties tab, we'll want to set a keyframe on the object's Z rotation. We can do this by hovering over the Z rotation parameter and pressing the shortcut I to generate a rotation keyframe. Now we can move the timeline to the 50th frame and set the Z rotation to 359 degrees, just off of one full 360 rotation. We press I again while hovering over the Z rotation, and there we have it, a rotating cube. But as you can see, the timing is sort of off on the loop. To change this, we can go to the graph editor and right click anywhere on the timeline to change the interpolation mode to linear. Now, when we press space to play the animation, we can see that our cube is rotating smoothly in a loop. The last step in Blender is to render our animation from the render menu. It shouldn't take too long for our PNG sequence to generate. Once Blender is done rendering the images, go into your web browser and navigate to gifmaker.me or follow the link in the description to this video. Giftmaker.me is an awesome website that allows us to upload any PNG sequence to format into an animated GIF. We'll press Upload Images and shift select the PNG sequence in our render folder. After waiting for the images to upload, we'll want to tweak the animation speed parameter. I usually change this to around 50 milliseconds. With that set, we can scroll down and press the Create GIF Animation button. It will take a little while for the site to process your request, but once the GIF is ready, press Download the GIF, and there you have it. Your first spinning blockhead GIF. And it may seem simple at this point, but when you reflect on all the new concepts learned in this short time, you deserve a little celebration. We made our own image textures, UV wrapped an object, animated and composited a 3D scene, and generated our first animated GIF. You are now officially a 3D animator. Keep on watching the Blender Foundation series to learn more. Thanks for watching.